Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 139. I just put out 138 a few days ago and there were a lot of little fun uh, bits in there. You guys seemed to really enjoy the revenge range thing and uh, several of you asked for a t-shirt to be made of it. So I contacted the design team. We have one available. I'll have a link down below in the description box. Be sure to purchase one if you're interested. All right, we're playing 510 in this episode and, uh, and 25 actually. So hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get started. I wake up at six in the morning and head into work like some kind of normal person. I trick Bellagio by telling him it's my birthday and they give me the entire casino floor to myself. They were fine with that, but they aren't willing to put me at the top of the list for 510. So I'm forced to start out at 25. I buy in for 500, which is the max. The very first orbit, I'm dealt pocket kings under the gun plus one, under the gun limps in. I recently read his autobiography. Apparently, even as a small child, he's always disliked money. I raise the 20, hoping to isolate him. We don't achieve our goal, the cutoff calls, the small blind calls, the big blind calls, I'm getting roughly 9,000 to one, the limper calls as well. We go five ways to the flop, no chance I'm ever gonna win this. It comes queen six deuce with two clubs, pretty good. If I'm not up against the set, I should have the best hand. Small blind takes it upon himself to bet 25. The big blind calls, under the gun folds. This feels a bit like a trap. Not only could the small blind be strong, but Big blind could have reasonably flatted with something like a set so that no one behind him gets scared off. $25 is just too small of a sizing. I can't call and possibly have a third opponent call after me. I raise to 100. If I'm beat, I'm beat. The cutoff folds. The small blind isn't wavering. He calls. The action's on the big blind. He seems like he's pondering a big decision. It's hard to tell if he's faking it or not. Eventually, he jams for about 600. He has me covered, as does a small blind. I don't love the situation that I'm in. I still don't think it's impossible that one or maybe both players have me beat. If either one does, then I'm drawing near dead. If I'm ahead, I likely won't be ahead by much. If we were deeper, I'd be more inclined to fold. In 100 big blind games, all I want to do is get it in and double up. I call. I'm hoping that I'm not crushed. Small blind only takes a few seconds to think about it before calling as well. Right off the bat, we're in a three-way all-in. There's only one card that I want to see and a lot that I don't. The turn is the nine of hearts. That seems decent. At this time, the big blind turns over five, four of clubs. He flopped a straight flush draw. At least I made a good call against him. The river is the ace of spades. Not great because the small blind could possibly have ace queen or the ace high flush draw. He ends up having neither. And by neither, I mean both. His ace queen of clubs, it was about the best case scenario for kings when we got it in since the opponents were holding some of each other's outs. Instead of tripling up, we get stacked immediately. Why does anyone wake up early in the morning? No one knows. We were a massive, massive favorite. We win 0.3% more often than ace queen suited. Small blind was basically drawing dead and then somehow miraculously wins. It's ridiculous. I rebuy for another 500. Then we get pocket queens on the button. Under the gun limps in for five. Under the gun plus one who won the previous hand raises to 15. The player on my right in the cutoff calls. I have a strong hand, but I don't want to be going four or more ways to the flop. I want to narrow down the field. I put in the three bet to 65. Under the gun and under the gun plus one both fold. The autobiographer is not letting me win that easily. He calls. We're heads up in position. The dealer puts out queen nine six with two hearts. We have top set. The opponent checks. It's hard for him to have much on a board like this since I smashed it so hard, just like you should be doing to the like and subscribe buttons right now. I down bet to 50 to give the cutoff a chance to do something silly. The opponent calls very quickly. This is generally a good indicator that the player has a drawing hand. Given the fact that I have top set, it's extremely likely that's the case. The turn is the Ten of Spades. It's an interesting card because three separate straight draws get there. I expect to see a check. Instead, the opponent bets 175. I have 365 total. I'm never folding. Time to let it ride. Come on. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh. There was no hesitation from the cutoff. We may need some help on the river. The dealer puts out the Nine of Diamonds. We make a full house. I jam, so I have to show first. I turn over the Queens proudly, thinking that I've got the winner, right? Well, you won't believe it. The other player turns over Ace Jack of Hearts. What is it for? Uh -huh. The opponent flopped a flush draw with one over and a backdoor straight draw. He turned an open ender, then bricked it all. After getting stacked right away, we get a big double up. A short time later, I get called for the 5 10 game. I end up only losing $100 in the 2 5, which I'll take after the start that we had. I change some chips and add on to get my stack up to $1,500. I'm in for $1,600 total, and we're playing with the big boys. A few orbits into it here at the new table, I'm dealt ace-king offsuit under the gun plus one, I raise to 30. The button three bets to 90. Usually this would indicate a ton of strength, but I just saw this particular player get it all in for 900 with pocket nines on a dry, queen high flop against another player. He drilled a nine on the turn to win the huge pot. That's all I know about him. 
Might have lost a few marbles. Perhaps he's tightened up since getting lucky in that hand though. This is where it starts to heat up. The big blind who's a good reg puts in the cold four bet to 350. Two players have shown a ton of strength. I don't like any option here for me. I'm close to the top of my range, so folding isn't ideal, though I only have $30 invested and I'm out of position with no clue if I have the best hand, so it's actually not terrible. Calling 350 will at best allow me to see a flop, but the button will likely call, so I'd be out of position, or worse, the button could five bet. I'm not a huge fan of calling. I five bet rip it in myself. Nice. All in. The button may have three bet me light, since he does strange things for fun, Big Blind is definitely capable of recognizing the situation and four betting light as a squeeze. I could certainly be best. There are only six total combinations of aces and kings that'll have me in bad shape. Even against kings, I still have 30% equity. The button folds pretty quickly. Glad to get through him. I don't get snap called by the Big Blind. I'm very happy about that because he's not gonna have aces or kings. I figure we probably have the same hand and it'd be great if he folds it. All right, Brad, let's do it. Okay, all right. Uh, I think we're chopping. What's the play? Sure. Oh, so we just like not run a board? I'm not completely opposed to chopping without running out of board, especially since the whole table is paying for time. The main concern is that I'm not entirely sure it's allowed, so we may have to get the floor involved, which would take more time. I don't think it's great for the game, and obviously, it's better for the video if there's blood. You're, you're good with that, right, bro? I'm fine with okay, it. Let's go, let's go. Actually, no, let's run it out. Let's run it out for the video. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. okay I feel like you're for sure gonna win now. <laughs> with an infinite amount of bad juju going for me, the dealer puts out the flop, Surprisingly, queen 7-7 seven, seven with two hearts. The opponent's drawing dead. I have a 5% chance of winning a pot of well over 3,000. It's a free roll for us. The turn is the five of hearts. All of a sudden, I have over a 20% chance of winning. This would be pretty gross. The river is red, but it's a nine of diamonds. Wow, almost had it, almost had it. <laughs> After all that, it ends up being a chop anyway. The good news is that my five bet jam scared off what would have been the winning hand. Despite only splitting up the button's three bet money, I'm now all the way unstuck for the session. Later we're dealt pocket tens under the gun plus one, I raised a 30. The player on my left calls with a short stack, she's fairly new to the game, but I've already seen her take some aggressive lines and she's stuck. We're heads up, out of position, as the dealer puts out the flop, the ten of spades is right in the window, we make top set again, there aren't many strong hands that I'll be up against on this board, I down bet to 20. A lot of people may check, but Betting small will build the pot by inducing lots of light calls, and in some instances, particularly against aggressive opponents, might induce some bluffs. The latter's true for us. The opponent raises to 60. I have it all, and there are no real draws out there to be worried about. I flat for 40 more. I'm very excited. The turn is a four. Five three is the only new hand that beats me. I check. The opponent immediately picks up chips from her stack and fires for 140. She only has 145 behind. There's a good chance she has absolutely nothing. I don't want to scare her. Take a little time to make her think I have a real decision to make before I eventually call. The river is the jack of clubs. Consider betting because I want to make sure that it doesn't get checked back if she happens to have a hand like ace 10. Giving her a chance to bluff at it is more beneficial, even though it's not a good spot for her to do so since she has a very small stack compared to the size of the pot. I check. No check back this time. She puts in her remaining chips. I snap call. She doesn't have us beat. She reveals that she has ace, king, and clubs. She raised on the flop with two overs and a backdoor straight draw, then was dead on the turn. We've had a big swing in the right direction. The pot is pushed towards us. We've gone from being stuck 500 to being up almost 400. In this one, we're dealt queen jack offsuit in the hijack. It's one of those trouble hands. In tough games with lots of three betting, I may even fold it from this position. Here we raised a 30, small blind calls. The big blind calls as well. At least we're in position. Three of us see the flop, it's ace 10 eight with two diamonds, we have a double gutter, any king or nine will give us a straight. Small blind checks, the big blind checks, I can have all the sets, I'll have two pairs and big aces, it's a fairly good board for me. As it is, I have six outs, it'll give me the nuts. I bet 50, small blind immediately checks his cards for a diamond, then reaches for chips and makes the call, probably doesn't have two diamonds, maybe he has one pair at best or a straight draw himself. The big blind folds, we're down to heads up, the turn is the five of spades, it shouldn't have changed much, Small blind checks. I'm keeping my foot on the gas. I bet 130 in order to put pressure on the opponent if he has a 10 or a weak ace of some sort. Again, the player immediately gets chips to make the call. If he was really strong, he would have taken some time to at least consider raising. The river is the deuce of hearts. It's a complete blank. Small blind checks. I've shown strength the entire hand up to this point. I continue with that story, betting 400. I'll be stuck for the day once again if he calls, but I don't think it's likely that that'll happen. He'll probably fold any one pair hand or miss draw. Without much thought, he lets it go. It's possible that we had the best hand with queen high or we were chopping. Either way, it feels great to get it through. That's the last big pot that comes towards us. I'm up 600 at the high point. Before the stack slightly dwindles, we rack up with a solid profit after battling back from the beginning.
short session today, played two and a half hours. I won 495, I got stuck 500 right away. So it was great to claw my way back. Things went well for the most part. Would have been nice if I had slightly different run outs on uh, two hands in particular. And I, I could have won big, but uh, really happy. I've been running really well lately overall. So I'm about, I've gotten about all my money back after losing 6K in Florida. So I'm pretty happy about that. Good way to close out the year. This is probably my last session of 2020. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to get back to you. Be sure to uh, purchase the Revenge Range t-shirt if you're interested. I have a link down below in the description box. I appreciate everybody who uh, commented on that video and um, you know, kind of recommended that we, we get a, a shirt with that design on it. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, then please do so. It's probably one of, my, one of my favorite videos to put out. Hope you guys are all doing well. Stay safe, good luck at the tables, and I'll see you next time.